All right, everybody, welcome in to our high school preview. Uh, as always, we got some student athletes in, some tremendously talented players from around the area. Uh, the man to my left over here, Mr. Daniel Sparks, <laughs> Reginald Davis, and myself. Uh, we're going to start off with Gadsden City. Uh, they're going to be playing Huntsville this week. Uh, Reggie, I'm going to kick it over to you. Tell us about both teams, and then we've got to put Mr. Sparks on, on the spot here. All right, uh, Gadsden City coming off another tough loss uh, last week at, to Florence. Um, in the rain, um, you know, they had the opportunities, but uh, going into this week's game, uh, you know, Coach Smith said the guys are, they're not giving up, so, you know, he, they're going to keep pushing, keep working hard. Um, Huntsville comes in with a 4-4 four four record. They're 1-4 in the region. Um, a lot of people were hyping Huntsville up at the beginning of the season as their region favorite, but um, as you can see, some other teams have stepped up. Um, so uh, Huntsville, they lost to Austin last week, 45-16. So both teams are coming into this game needing to win pretty bad. Awesome. I mean, Huntsville's 4-4 uh, four and four on the season. 4-4, four four, yep. Um, this should be a pretty good game, pretty close. And actually, Daniel, you guys actually get to get back home, correct? We do. Yes. How does that feel to you personally? Yes. <laughs> I'm sick of traveling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, especially after that long forest drive. That's right. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, your last two games have been – huge road games and one of them on a Thursday. Mm -hmm. um, the preparation in a shortened week like that is or a, a lengthened week like that, is that any different? You know, because y'all went from being playing on Friday to Thursday and it adds an extra day of preparation for last week's game. Yeah, I think it just extended practices a little bit. Maybe gave us another day of full pads to practice, but other than that, not really. Um, in the Florence game, y'all was actually very close and uh, Reggie and I was watching the tweets and I remember yeah. It was at one point. It's yeah, it was tied 3 3, and uh, I think uh, Florence went up 10 3, and I think you, know, you guys came back and tied it back at 10 mm -hmm. late in the game. Um, and Gadsden City holds, holds a 7 2 record all time versus Huntsville. Do you know that? They, yes, they do. I think their two losses may have come in the playoffs um, when they were in different regions way back. Well, we're going to go ahead and get Daniel to guarantee a victory right now. Yeah. I'm just kidding, man. Just kidding. It's Coach Smith, we're just kidding. Just straight He's going to kick the game with a field goal. I like that. 50 yarder. <laughs> <laughs> I do have one question for Daniel. Uh, I got another one after you. You talk about that uh, the fake punt in the James Clemens game. Mm -hmm. uh, how was that? Was that a call play, or is that something you saw yourself and decided to go for? Got to call timeout for a second. What did I ask you as soon as you walked in the house? <laughs> <laughs> I said, "How many times have y'all practiced that?" Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. We, we practiced it about twice. We <laughs> usually have a fake before every game and uh -huh. practice about twice before the game. And uh, but he called it, and then we look over at him, and he he like confirms it or sees mm -hmm. what the defense is doing. So just. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. So back, what Daniel's not telling you is the six days. shooters he had out as he's walking inside. <laughs> oh, yeah, he was pretty excited after that. <laughs> Just joking. So, what's the mindset of the team right now, uh, from your best judgment, coming in at the situation you guys are in? I know it's not what you wanted it to be. I know you still got some Warriors on the team that's still fighting, though. Overall, what do you, what yeah. you set up the mindset? I think, um, the, I think it's pretty good because if we have a bunch of young guys, we really don't have that many seniors. So all those young guys are trying to prepare for next season. So they want to go ahead and get their, their wins. And, the best way, you know, it's kind of like you're uh, auditioning for a job. I mean, it's like, I mean, this is your resume for next season. Because he's, you know, one thing Ollie Smith talks about on Wednesdays when we do the show with him is, is the ones who don't quit and the ones who stay in there and fight with him. That's the ones yep. he wants to go to battle with. Yep. And like you said, not having that many seniors and looking for the future, that's the guys he's going to want to take the war with. Yeah. Well, Daniel, good luck to you guys um, this Friday at Titan Stadium, my man. Yep. I'll hey. be there. Mm -hmm. Reggie, I like where your head's at. Yeah, I'm going to be there. That's it. I like it. <laughs> Thank you, my man. Yes, sir. All, All right. right. Thank you, sir. All right, our next game is going to bring us into, I don't know I don't know the words I can use this. This is the, the biggest, by far. Far and away, the biggest game for Etowah, because you know at the, at the beginning of the season, you know you have Gadsden City Etowah, which is a massive game, but it's a bragging rights game. It really doesn't mean anything as far as any of the goals Etowah had. When when the, when this season started, their goal was not let's beat Gadsden City, mm -hmm. you know. That, and according to Coach Holiday, it's to win the day method, which I'm sure Tay's going to bring up in a minute because everybody does. Yeah. Uh, but in the in the reality of things, this means everything. Now, Etowah sitting at 7-1, 6-0 in the region, Alexandria 
sitting at six and zero. Uh, I believe four and zero, or are they five and zero in the region. They're five, five and zero in the region. Jay, the big thing, the major thing about this one is, got them at home. Oh yeah, that's got them at home. That's the big thing. Going to Death Valley, that's what they call it down there. They call it Death Valley for a reason. Yeah, for a reason, because it's uh, it's hard to win down there. I know the last couple of years we played down there, we've escaped barely though. It's been close games, but this game right here, you know, it's it's pretty big. This is for uh, the number one seed uh, going out of this area, going into the playoffs. You know, getting getting that four seed at home, so. That's the goal, is to get that four seat at home for Edelwald. And they just better have their minds right, because it's going to be – those are scrappy. They're, they're always, they've always been that way. Um, talk about Edelwald getting healthy and, and that, how much that's going to help. Um, having guys like Finch back, you know, Trent back healthy. Uh, even Brady got banged up some. Yeah, well, I mean, everybody's banged up at this yeah, point of the season. It's been – it's the midseason blues is what they call it. But, uh, yeah, Trent to Trent be back at safety this week. Uh all they be back as well. Playing, he's missed the last two games because of uh, an injury to his knee. But he'll he'll be back. But I think that's going to be huge having them back because that's going to open up the offense more and that's going to help the defense out tremendously. Um, introduce my man Tay here to everybody. This right here is the uh, other side starting corner of Tay Wright, number seven. If you don't know, now you do. Now you do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Opposite of Nana Davis. Opposite of Nana Davis is the other guy, the other big dog. So Tay. In a game like this, and I know you've watched Memo and Alexander at this point, in a game like this, when you're playing a team, not necessarily it's going to challenge you. I mean, you, you've you got to have that in the back of your mind. They're going to go play action at some point. But your number one goal, and I can tell you this right now, it's got to be we've got to stop their run. How are you, you yourself preparing to – you can't just look in the backfield and take off every time. So what's your preparation being getting ready for these guys? Uh, we got to get physical. And you just got to focus because last week we didn't have it. Focus. Uh, against Douglas? Against – oh, no. Week before last, we didn't oh, have Pell focus. Oh, City? We didn't have focus. Uh, yeah, I want to ask you a little bit about that. How was practice the Monday after that? Was it was it fun? Uh, nah, we just knew what we had to do. We came in and got it over with. I got you. Um, so what you've seen from Alexandria, they run an old school power. Um, with a lot of counters and traps and, and, and what we would call like 90s and 80s football. Um, does that excite you more as a defensive back to play somebody like that or would you rather have somebody that threw it all over the field? I'd rather have somebody throw it. <clears throat> Get you involved more? Yes. Uh, I like where your head's at. Jay, what questions you got for my man? You ready to tackle a lot? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you don't have to. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, there's going to be a lot. Of, that'll probably be – I mean, they'll pass it some, obviously, but everybody's going to have to wrap up. No oh, kind yeah. of arm tackling, no – like, no – you got to give 100% full effort. It can't be no half effort. It's got to be 100%. It's Dobbs and, and Gladden, they got kind of banged up. They're back good now, right? Yeah, they're playing. Oh, yeah. Do you guys get to rest a pretty good bit in the, in the Douglas game? Yes, sir. Y'all did? Yes, sir. See, I'll be pretty much, I mean, you know, obviously Isaiah's not going to be bad, but outside of that, y'all be pretty much full strength for this one. Yeah. So, all right. What we got to do to get you to swoop over and play some offense, man? I've seen you on the field. You got some speed, man. Yeah. Did we talk to Coach Holiday about that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not putting you on that kind of spot, man. I'm just playing with you. Well, man, you do what you say you're going to do, win the day. Thank you for sitting in with us. Yes, sir. All right. All right, so the next game, no bigger than this. Yeah, again, no bigger than this. This is the huge. This is this is separation Friday, mm-hmm. right here. Men and the boys. It is. This yep. is Ohatchee, who was off last week, who's six and zero, four and zero in the region, facing Ramburn, who's seven and zero, five and zero in the region, and they played a, a a dangerous West End team that could put up some points. And West End actually jumped out on them. Was it twelve to nothing? Twelve to nothing. Yeah. And then Ramburn just. We flip the switch, and the next thing you know, the game's over in the 66 to 26 yeah. over West End. Yeah. I think Rammer was looking ahead a little bit. Here's the good news for Ohatchee. There's a good and a bad. Here's the good news for Ohatchee. Ohatchee, uh, Coach Martin, he was off. They were off. Mm-hmm. Coach Martin um, got some guys healed up, got an extra week to prepare for Rammer. 
The bad news is they're going to Ramburn. Mm. Ramburn, I'm telling you right now, Ramburn is wanting these guys. I'm talking about they want them, and they want them at home, and they got them at home. Now, is this going to be one of those games where Ramburn is too excited and too juiced up for this, or are they going to be able to execute? And Ohatchee is an outstanding football team. They will line up and run the ball right down your throat, and you, your linebackers has got to fill gaps, and they got to get people on the ground. If they cannot, if again, if Ramburn cannot do that, which – I don't think you could script a worse team to play before you play Ohatchee than West End. And that's I'm not saying that any kind of negative shot at West End, but West End is a spread you out, let it rip type mm-hmm. team. Ohatchee is right opposite of that. They are tight stances, line up, downhill, straight at you, um, football team. Reggie, talk to me. Hmm. What's his name, Mr. Smith from Rambert? The running back? Uh, I, I remember his name. It's Smith. It's Smith. He's okay. an unbelievable running back. Go ahead. Um, I've had the pleasure of seeing Ohatchee play for the first time a couple of weeks ago. Um, uh, just hearing about him and actually seeing him play is two different things. Yeah. Because you can talk and how great they are, but actually seeing it in person, I was seriously, my jaw was on the ground most of that game. Most of the first half I was there. Because I, I just couldn't believe what I saw. I mean, it was like five watching Fife play, but you you put a put a little season on it. You know what I'm saying? It's it's I I was speechless, <laughs> and I still am. Um, Ohachi is is a dangerous team. Um, like we've talked about earlier, the two A North is going to be a dog fight in the playoffs. You got Fife. Collinsville, Ohatchee, Ranburn, and you can't count out Westbrook. No. You know, you can't count them out. Because uh, you never know. Drew knows when he gets in the playoffs, uh, traditionally he can – you you just don't know what's going to happen. Um, so this 2A North is going to be uh, ridiculous. And these two teams, I'm sure we're, they're going to see each other again in the playoffs. So I just um, – Dominique Thomas and um, – he's – He's a, he's very explosive. This running back matchup is going to be unbelievable. It's going to be unbelievable. Yeah, and the quarterback from Ohachi, he can if he if he doesn't have an open receiver, he can take off and run with the ball, and he can be just as explosive Christian coming out the Smith. backfield. Christian Smith, I think that's the name. Christian Smith. Okay, from Rambler. So yeah, that's going. To, I, I think this is going to be a high scoring game. It could it could turn into a shootout. Yeah, definitely turn into a shootout. Talk to me, Kevin. I think the emotion, because like you said, they've been wanting Ohachi down there for a year. They're they're getting what they're wanting. Ohachi's undefeated. Uh, Rambert's undefeated, correct? Mm-hmm. Rambert is undefeated. And I was rolling. thinking they were. Uh, and rolling. And um, it's you know, it, the the thing about it is how uh, quickly once the game starts, how settled down right Rambert. Because if they jump out, and a lot of teams sometimes emotional carry it, it can't. It only carry you so far. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I think after the first series, offensively and defensively, they'll they'll settle down. If they don't or can't can't settle down, it could be a long night for Ramber. Yeah, um, it does let their emotions get too carried away. Because if they get too carried away and Dominique busts one for sixty yards, yeah, that where, 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 where are they going to be at mentally? Yeah, mm-hmm. they got to settle down and, and, for, and forget about that play ha- happening. I think Dominic Thomas wants this. Mm-hmm. First of all, he wants to play four quarters, which he never gets to do, mm-hmm. and that's no disrespect to the people on their schedule. That's how good Hatchie is. Right. Mm-hmm. Coach Smith. You know, talks about the importance of starting early, and he talks about the importance of execution. The flip side of that is, like you said, can Ramburn be a controlled chaos? Yeah, we're hot, we're running through. We're but but what if you take that one step and then you get kicked out, and then Dominic Thomas is gone? You've got to be. You got. You can play with emotion on defense, but you've got to use your head. Yep. Flying all the way around the field, all that, all that's great. But at some point, you know. It's going to, and, and Ohachi is going to put you in a phone booth, and they're going to make you play them in a phone booth. I think I may drive over to practice tomorrow and tell, Ohachi? Yeah, and say, uh, co- and tell the players, hey, Rambert's saying they're going to shut y'all out. <laughs> Coach Smith, you I th- like that. You think you think <laughs> I'll fire them up? Oh, man. <laughs> I don't know if you could fire them up anymore. I think they're going to be pretty dialed in, but I think that would definitely get the party started. Mm-hmm. I think that we don't need to drop this video until you do it. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, I'm going to tell you this, though. 
you've seen them live. Mm-hmm. All right. They are a physical, physical football team. Yeah. Defensively, they are very, very good. Yeah, they 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 run to the ball. They run to the ball. Now, what kind of offense does Rambo run? They they spread or they? I think you just I mean, told me I just overlooked it, but they get Smith the ball. Okay, that's they get him the ball. They have linebackers that's really aggressive. Are they downhill like Ohachi? They they are. They they get it to him in space a lot too. And he's a physical runner, but he but he but he also breaks he breaks a lot of tackles. But he's got great vision too. He'll put you in the mindset of a Christian McCaffrey type guy. Um, but, but, I mean, a little bit more physical on, on this scale. I'm not saying he's more yeah. physical than the Christian McCaffrey, but you don't see Christian McCaffrey running people up. This guy will. But having having Ohachi at home, it's going to be interesting. And, and, and I want to know right off the bat, this, this is going to be the toughest test that Ohachi's had. Mm-hmm. And, they, you know, they're breaking in a new uh, quarterback this season who's a sophomore. So how is he going to do on the road? Uh, there, there's a lot of questions to be asked, but the one thing that I was going to get to my, my initial point was, again, it's a slogan that we've used several times, and I'm going to use it again here. Even though Hatchie's on the road, defense travels. You know what I'm saying? So their defense is going to be there, and they're going to show up, and their starters are going to get to play a good little bit in this game. And uh, I think it's going to be a fantastic football game. Mm-hmm. And I know Coach Smith takes them serious, and I know Ramburn – I've heard from a very, very reliable source, very close to Ramburn and their staff. They cannot wait till Ohachi gets off that bus. That whole town is on fire wanting Ohachi. Now, Ohachi beat them last year, correct? 28 nothing. They did. It was in a – Ohachi kind of pulled away, but it was a – It was at Ohachi, so. And, and their fan, to make no mistake, I know it's right now, but their fans – think they should have beat them and their fans think that that was one of their worst games they played and that they 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 cannot wait to get them back down there i i back in i i can understand being compare it to uh collegially i know there's been some games where alabama has lost and i couldn't wait to play those guys the next you know next oh, yeah. time same so, scenario it's like and i and i'm not throwing this up in your face i'm just being told serious 2008 Florida, Tim oh, yeah. Tebow. Tim Tebow had the best game of his life. Yep. Or not better. I mean, he, we, we uh, did it. We, well, point, well, we did everything we could. Bama did everything we could. Tim Tebow still couldn't. They still couldn't stop him. They made him throw into some tiny windows. And, 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 and they going. spent their whole offseason focusing on that game. And yeah. I would imagine the Rammer players were doing, were doing the same thing. They're all saving for Apache. Because they know they're not going to win the championship in this region unless they beat this team. And they know for their seniors and their town, this is we it. got them at home. We're loaded. We have no excuses. We want them at our place. They got them at their place. This is it. Yeah. And one thing too, should Ohachi win the ball game, Rambert's got to get a quick mindset. They got to forget about it because oh, yeah. they got they got a quick turnaround because I don't know who they play the week after that. But well, I, you know, well, I could. T- I don't want to put the cart ahead of the horse. Right. They they may be having to take a trip to a very familiar team in round two that, that we cover. Mm. So I just I'll leave it at that. Uh, uh, mm. North of Etowah County. Mm. Mm. So they don't want that. So what they, they want to do is win. I hope they, mm. they got all the good churches down there. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll just leave it at that. We're not going to put the car to have the horse. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. All right, our next game is going to bring us into the Five Red Devils versus North Sand Mountain. Um, I'm going to tell you this right now. If you want an intriguing, interesting matchup, this is going to be your game uh, for several reasons. This is for the region championship. Make no mistake about it. It's for the region championship. If Fife wins, they win the region. Um, Fife is at home. Here's here's the, the, the yin, here's the yang to the yin of that. You now have Landon Green coming to town, who is the most unorthodox quarterback in the state without a doubt. He at Peyton Stoner's famous words is he's everywhere and nowhere all at the same time. I watched him play Collinsville earlier this year and honestly I very few times have I watched a high school game and just been absolutely blown away uh, at what I was seeing because I've never seen anything like it. This guy literally will run 150 yards not to not to take off running but to free up time for his receivers to get up. 
By the way, when he was playing Collinsville doing this, he had, I think, 31 staples or 32 staples in mm-hmm. his head from an ATV accident. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what? The staplers, staples are out. He's healed up now, and they are rolling. Uh, North Sam Mountain is rolling right now. They are uh, five and five and two overall. They're four and one in the region. That that only loss coming to a very very talented console team. Coach Benfield, I know him very well. We did a coach's show every Saturday morning. He told me this is a very very dangerous opponent. He takes them with the utmost respect. He gives. He he told me straight from his own mouth that this team is very dangerous and five better be ready to play. Let me flip around and talk about five for a minute, and I'm gonna kick it over to these guys. Fife currently is sitting with the number one defense in the state. They're giving up 1.3 points per game. Uh, They're number three in scoring differential, um, that being what they score versus what the opponents score. Uh, The margin of victory in games, they're they're defeating their opponents by 38.7 points per game. This Fife team is the real deal. They are as advertised. They are physical. They are strong. They are athletic. They are experienced. And the scary part about it is that they're mostly underclassmen. <laughs> uh, everybody on this team returns next year except four players. And they gain some that's coming up. So this, this, is, this team is the real deal. They're seasoned. They will be ready for Landon Green and company. Mm-hmm. I want to see this matchup from the standpoint of Fife is going to face some of this spread and open offenses in the playoffs. No better person on the planet you would want to dial it up against than Landon Green because he's going to he's going to challenge you vertical. He's going to challenge you underneath, and if everything else breaks down, he will take off. Um, let's let Kevin lead off on this one. Well, uh, like you said, that's I, I want to play Landon Green going in the playoffs because. If he's the athlete he says he is, it's like, you know, you deal with him, the playoffs might be easy. <laughs> yeah, um, he's that type. And, and he's that it sounds like he's a Joe Montana kind of, you know, scrambling around. And if, if you took Manziel when he was at A&M and put, and put him on about 40 Red Bulls <laughs> and then spun him around in a circle and threw him out there, but he still has a mind to get the ball up the field, that's him. <laughs> you've got to you've got to defend him everywhere on the field. Well, I have to ask, how did well? As I said, how did they lose the one game? But you said it was the Collins they lost. They lost the Collins won the shootout. I mean, when you go, one thing you don't want to do with Collins was getting a shootout because they're dangerous. And at the time, I think they went in jail. He was still, you know, injured. Now I'm not taking anything away from Collins, but he still had the staples, and he was, you know, he just had an ATV wreck with not stitches, staples in his head. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And they did lose the Collinsville, but since then he's got his feet back under him. He they're they're rolling. They are. Rolling. I got I got a feeling Be- Benefield may not have a voice come Friday because the, <laughs> the intensity they're going to mm-hmm. have in practice. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, he's, and, he's and plus, and plus like you know, like we talked about earlier, the region championship is on the line, and the first round. And of course, for some of the small schools like five, you know, the more home games you have, the more seat and gate money you have, so that's more money for their program. That's right. Uh, mm-hmm. So that's I, all the more reason to have another uh, home game. That's right. Because you know the people are going to come out and watch that. Um, I mean, their their two losses, uh, Landon Green lost to Sylvania, but Sylvania is a 3A team yeah. that's very, very good. Mm-hmm. But then they beat Cedar Bluff 55-22, to and then they beat Eider 48 to nothing. So now not only is their offense rolling, now their defense is starting to click a little bit better. Mm-hmm. So, Reggie, so, talk to us about this challenge, man. Um, what, do you, what, what do you want to <laughs> see from five, and what do you think is going to happen? Uh, I think five's going to come out. They're going to do what they do. What they do. Um, Cedar Bluff came out last week and tried to throw a little wrinkle at him and <laughs> didn't didn't do him any good because it, it didn't work. Because as soon as Five got the ball, they you know they just they just took off and uh, I, yeah, I think the defense is going to be challenged a little bit. But uh, like you said, Benefield's going to have those guys dialed in um, and those rankings are statewide. That's regardless of classification. That's one A through seven A. So. They literally have the best defense in the state of Alabama right now. I mean, for a two A school to have that, I mean that's that's pretty pretty impressive. Um, so I, I, their fight's gonna be ready. They're gonna, like I said, they're gonna be dialed in, ready to go. Uh, I mean that's just that's Benefield, that's Fife, that's what they do. Man. Uh, if you're an Alabama high school player and you scored on five, 
You done something. <laughs> Believe it or not, Kip, Kip Masbury did it. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, Collinsville, Collinsville uh, uh, Perez hit a field goal on um, Collinsville. Hey, the field goal kicker, give him up. Yeah. <laughs> Make Con- him clear in a week. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> uh, but, yeah, that's uh, you talk about a tremendous challenge, man. And, you know, Cedar Bluff was undefeated in rolling until they played North Sand, and North Sand smacked them by 30. Mm-hmm. That's how good these guys – I mean, you saw – I mean, Cedar Bluff – they ran clock on five last week, yep. but it was that was a good game. It was. Reggie and I went to that one, and again, <laughs> it was the Anaconda. Yeah. You know, just the vice. Um, I just got a feeling it's in the ball game. Five's going to be going, their daddy going, son, bye, son. Because <laughs> <laughs> they shouldn't name the Bisons. <laughs> yeah, Bisons. <laughs> What was you going to say, right? Yeah, Cedar Bluff tried to tried to pull a fight on fight, and it didn't work out too well. Yeah, they tried to run they, out at them. And yeah, they, the they, and they held the ball. I guess was about a minute, about a minute down in, I, um, in the first quarter. Do you remember the those saying? Well, let's put it this way, Ken. This is a true statement. At the end of the first quarter, Cedar Bluff had twenty four plays and Fife had one play, and it was six to nothing. Fife. <laughs> yeah, true story. True story. <laughs> well, true story. it just goes to show you. I mean, you can't. <laughs> and, and the and the tension on that sideline through that whole entire first quarter as Cedar Bluff just methodically moved down the field. Just, you could feel the tension on the sideline and in the stands behind you because yeah, it was, was like, kind of weird. what is going on? What what are these guys doing? You know, <laughs> and they would run the play clock down to inside five and then they'd snap it. Yeah, and then they'd run it down to inside five and then they'd snap it. And they think they got them, and all of a sudden, boom. But, you know, five does what five does. When they started moving it down the field, well, then finally they got that stop on first down. Okay, well, then now you're at second nine. Mm-hmm. And then you get two of yards with what you've been doing. All right, now you're in third and seven, and you got five's defense barreling down on you. Then it's fourth down and long, and that's it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And then they touch the hand the ball off the eye growl, gone. <laughs> Oh, I'd love to see the game film for that. Oh, it's I mean, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not believe you. I just yeah. just watching that in awe. It was kind of strange. It I mean, was really. strange because I really didn't know what the basketball. To say. The basketball term, uh, people who press don't like to get pressed. Yeah, <laughs> that may have been what they were thinking. <laughs> but yeah. then you flip around and it, it brings me back. I tell you this, and we'll move on. Uh, uh, like you said, the one play, the one chance, and then five did. It reminds me of a story Ollie Smith told us about. Um, do you remember? Was you? Yeah, you were there mm-hmm. when he was talking about when Dabo Swinney come over here and was recruiting uh, Dre mm-hmm. and Jarrell. Mm-hmm. He said Alabama would come in. They'd send their host staff, graduate assistants, <laughs> uh, position coaches, coordinators, head coach. Mm-hmm. They sending everybody, and they said, uh, "Was it Dabo? Was it was it Dre and them who's recruiting?" I think. So. I think it was. And they said Dabo Swinney would just show up here by himself. Yeah. And he's like. Well, dude, so and so, you know, Alabama in the house, and he said, "Hey, man, I just need one bullet in my gun." Yeah. He said, "I just need that one bullet, son. You got to make it count." <laughs> yeah. In other words, he wasn't coming over here with a Tommy gun. He's coming over here with a sniper rifle. <laughs> <laughs> I guess he missed. <laughs> yeah, he did because they both went to Alabama. <laughs> All right. All right, we're gonna shut it down and move on. All right, our next game is gonna be another. Unbelievably huge game. This is a week for huge games. You're going to have Central Clay versus Silicaga. Central Clay is five and two overall. Losses to Jasper and Monmer Jordan. Four and one in the region. Then you turn around. And you got Silicaga seven and one. Four and one in the region. Four way tie for first with center point Monmer Jordan. The games, the stakes can't get any bigger. It's like every week you turn around. Central Clay's in some monumental <laughs> game, dude. Yeah. That region. Dude is stupid. Yeah, it is. I was when I was getting the notes for this. I was looking at the region record, and I was like, "Whoa! All four of these teams are four and one in this region right now." So there's about to be some crazy tiebreakers. They're probably going to go to tiebreaker Z. Well, don't to figure out this. Don't region. all four of these <laughs> square off in the next two weeks, though. If I'm not mistaken. If, I, if I'm not mistaken, um, I think they do. Now, um, now, Jay, you want to say something about this region? Because yeah. when they're going to cross over eventually with with Edwall, with Edwall. well, Edwall's going to play one of them. And you like, I looked at it Friday night after the Edwall game, and when I heard Center Point, not Center Point, but Silicaga beat Center Point, I was like, <laughs> yeah, I, I I thought I heard it wrong, so I went and checked. <laughs> I did too. <laughs> and uh, and I was and Silicaga really beat them, and I was like, oh wow. So because you got you got Center Point, 
Mortimer Jordan, Silicaga, and uh, Clay Central in that region. Right now, the way it's looking, these next what three weeks, it's it's just man, it's a toss up. It's gonna be, it's a gut check. Who's gonna want it? And uh, all four teams are well coached. They have athletes. They yeah. play hard. And uh, where's that game at? Uh, in Lineville or uh, uh, Silicaga? It, it is. It is in Lineville. Okay, so good. So Clay Central, so, huge. So they got them at home. That's so, huge. Uh, like I said, man, that, that region right there, that's like, I don't know, it kind of reminds you of the SEC a little bit. You know, it's dog fights, all, it, all four of them. To so. me, it, I mean, th- this may be outside of 7A Region 3, top to bottom, the best region in the state. Yeah. As far as, like, the competition. I'm not saying if you put them all in a pool to play – but dude, the region with Hoax Bluff and Jacksonville and Aniston is unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like these two A regions are good, but they're top heavy, like mm-hmm. Collinsville Fife, and then you got Ramburn Ohatchee. But top to bottom, you got Silicaga beat, beating Center Point. Yeah, because yeah. Silicaga beat Center Point. Then a couple of weeks ago, Center Point beats Mortimer Jordan, and I'm like, I'm like. What I mean, what's going on over there, man? Well, you know? looking at the schedules, uh, Mortimer Jordan has the easiest road to win in this region. Uh, the other three teams play each other between now and the end of the season. Uh, okay, Mortimer so Jordan they've already navigated some of those waters. Mortimer Jordan, they've got Springfield Moody close after season, and that's it. So they've already navigated these waters. Yeah. So, uh, and they came out with one loss out of all of this, and the other ones are gonna. Fight it out to the so game. so now it's a, a battle to see who's going to host so the playoffs. So play central. So center point still got to play the other two. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah, they close out. Center point closes out with Clay Central. Oh, great. Next next week. So, so central Clay. I mean, Danny Horn. I still. I mean, he he's a lot like the, a lot of these other legendary coaches around the state. Yeah. Like Josh well, Midley, uh, Paul the, Benefield. The until somebody him, beats him. Look, I mean, with. they were in this situation last year. They came in, what, third in the region last year? Second they had three third. losses. Yeah. They had three losses, and then they win a state championship. That's right. So yeah. you can't count this dude out. This no. dude knows what he's doing. <laughs> and his <laughs> losses are minute yeah. by the fractions. Because I remember last year, uh, Clay Central coming to Edwall, you know, everybody was like, ah, oh, this team ain't this and all that. <laughs> you know, and then – uh, like, yeah. I did some digging on him, and I realized uh, I was like, "Who is this horn guy? He's got all these rings. Like, who is this dude?" <laughs> and fr- Friday night, they scored thirty three points on what was told to be the best defense in the state. Scored thirty three, easy, not even, not even close. So I found out who Daniel Horn was that night. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people found out who he was that yeah, night. Then, 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 three game, game. then three games later, they're holding up state championship play. And so, beat an un- unbeatable Viger team. Everybody exactly. said that was one of the best 5A yeah. teams in years and years. Exactly. There you go. But I guess that one's going to be interesting. All right. Mm-hmm. We're going to move on now. All right, everybody. Our next game is going to be Southside versus Boaz. Uh, and if you guys can remember last year, um, I think this is the game that really kicks in. I remember you sat in last year, yeah, and you and Ethan did. Yeah. Um, this is the game that kind of really kick-started uh, that run you guys went on, which led you into the playoffs. And uh, um, Now, you still got everything in front of you this season. Yes, we just got to win. She got to go in doing the right thing. We'll be good. That's right. I'm go ahead and let you introduce yourselves here. I'm Hayden. Play uh, outside linebacker. His last name's Fry. Because if you come up the middle, you're going to get fried. <laughs> Slice and dice. <laughs> I'm old. I play receiver, DB, a lot of special teams. They got me all over the field. but Hey, we call him AB around here. <laughs> so, all right, let's talk about from an offensive standpoint coming in. You got to watch some film on Boaz's defense so far? I watched it the day after Alexander. I'll just go ahead and watch the cornerbacks, see what I got to do, and our fellow receivers, see what they got to do too. Absolutely. Um, Michael Rich, as the seasons went on, has progressed. And I mean, against Etowah, you guys actually broke out and started out very fast. Um, <laughs> seems like you guys are getting close to putting it all together. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, very close. Yeah. So this would be the, I mean, like I said, you still got everything in front of you. Um, from an execution standpoint, what what are you, you guys looking to do this week? 
same thing we did against Alexander. Stops, hitches. I mean, we can kill them okay. on the outside a lot. I like it. Yeah, I mean, y'all got y'all got some explosive guys. So I know you can. Thank you. All right, from an offensive side, when you see, what did you see from their offense, from Boaz's offense? I know they lost Christian Collins, but yeah, they still I mean, move the uh, ball pretty good. They still move the ball pretty good. They got two good running backs. We want to play downhill football and just hit them in the mouth. I think that's what Southside's born to do. Yeah, that's what yeah, we know them for. Pretty much. Well, it's been the mindset of the, the team, you know, as the seasons went on. I mean, you guys, have, you showed signs here and there. Um, you still got everything to play for in front of you. And you guys still got everybody on board and, and ready to go to battle? Yeah, we still got everybody on board. I mean, we lost Chance, but we gained Zeke, so it's kind of a win win loss situation. Well, Zeke will be ready for this week. Yeah, he, he, play, play, he, he played in the last week. Oh, he did play last week. That's <clears> huge. <throat> yeah, that's huge. Yeah, but we got Zeke back. Chance is hurt. Man, and that's then. unfortunate, man. So we. Everybody liked watching Chance play. Yeah. Chance got a broke. Well, I don't know if we can talk about medical stuff on here. He's out. He's on injury. <laughs> I don't know if we can talk about medical stuff on here. Okay. But um, offensively, you guys have actually started putting up more points. Yeah. And what what's kind of weird is you, you hit the meat of your schedule before yeah. y'all really started. The Edelwalls and Alexandrias before y'all really started putting up the points. You know? oh, yeah. Um, talk about like your relationship with Michael Rich. I mean, um, did you guys get to do a lot of practicing in the off season together? Oh yeah, we came. We did a, like a little summer workout. Receivers and running backs and quarterbacks came in, worked out, did like agility stuff. And then me and Michael and some other kids would stay after, That's good. work on our timing and stuff. And we just busted it all season. That's good. Um, the, you know, timing's everything in the passing game. I don't have to tell you guys that. Um, what about you, Mr. Fry? Uh, you know, playing alongside people like Moon and Zeke, that's got to be, I mean, you have to elevate your game to, you know, match what those guys do. But it, but it, each time of the season, you know, now one's been out and one's back and one's on. So you've kind of shouldered that load. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I just, everybody else on defense, when, when they're out, we just got to step up and do what they do best, tackle, and that's just what we got to do. Well, guys, um, we're looking forward to this game. Uh, we've had a lot of people ask to get us some Southside guys on here. We, we've had some invited, and it hadn't worked out, but I'm glad you guys came on. Yes, sir. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. All right, our next game brings us in to Hoax Bluff versus Cherokee County. Um, I don't think the stakes could get any bigger in this one. Um, it was 5-2. Versus four and three, but in region play, basically, this is the end all be all. This yeah. is a must win for both, both teams because I think the loser uh, in this game we might be sitting at home come the first round of the playoffs. Yeah, unless some crazy stuff happens. I mean, basically, yeah, let's just say it what it is. I mean, this yeah. is a it's a playoff game. It's a play. I mean, this is this is like a play in game for the playoffs. So you got Hoax Bluff coming off another big win, uh, Cleveland County. 43 to nothing. Um, now, we got Mr. Blevins sitting in with us. Uh, everybody knows Ashton Gulledge and Will Clemens uh, has both been on the show several times. Mm -hmm. This is the third cousin. There's three amigos. <laughs> Don't let them fool you. <laughs> so if you was to get into a scrap and you get through, you know, somehow got through Ashton and then Will, mm -hmm. But then they're bringing in the Bulldozers. <laughs> this is Bulldozer Blevins, baby. I don't know if you're going to get through Ashton. Yeah, <laughs> that might I might just stop right there. You, know. uh, you may not see Will. <laughs> Will are off. But whoever gets through them two, I'm like, I'm going to shake the man's hand. Exactly. Um, all right, so coming into this game with Cherokee County, this is an old school ride. Right? You guys have been doing battle forever. I mean, back in the day, uh, I can remember back for years and years, those two teams not liking each other too much and, and going at it. Mm -hmm. um, Talk to talk to us. What you have you you watched film on them so far this year? Uh, yeah, we watched a little bit uh, today on watching them play against Aniana. And Aniana's a pretty talented team. Oh, yes, uh, what 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 stuck out on film to you about them? For me, their line, offensive line, really big and strong. So we're gonna have to get a good push up front and try to keep them off our linebackers and let Will and Burke run. Oh, um, make tackles. So, you know, basically this is going to be another one of those. Yeah, I mean, in the region you guys play in, mm -hmm. it's every single week everybody's good. Mm -hmm. well, that may be a team with a losing record in your region, 
but I mean, when you when you're talking about top to bottom, um, th- this is a Aniana, Aniston, Jacksonville, you guys, Cherokee County. When Cherokee County is literally like uh, considered a lower lower tier team in the region, <laughs> yeah. that region's stacked. Yeah, yeah it I mean, is. talk about that region, Reggie. Yeah, that region. Um, we talked about this earlier in the year how. Uh, 4A Region 6 is probably one of the better regions in this area, if not the state. Um, coming into the season, everybody was looking at Host Bluff and Jacksonville, but now Anderson has, has come out and um, and Aniana has come out and surprised Dude, people. They just come out of nowhere. Yeah, so, so now, you know, going from a – you're talking about two teams and the other teams uh, playing for the other two playoff spots. you got five teams playing for four playoff spots now. So uh, that's – that's tough, and I mean, whoever comes out of this region, what four teams they're gonna make a run in the playoffs? Oh, absolutely, because um, they've they've definitely been battle tested, which is good. Like I said, come playoff time. So what all, what all are you playing right now? I play. Uh, you playing both ways, correct? Yes, sir. I play defense tackle and offense. Are you first team on both sides? Yes, sir. Wow. Man. So you're on the field all night, <laughs> pretty, pretty much. much. Yes, sir. So how, how much? Uh, how much? I don't know, I don't know what's the words here. I'm not gonna say trash time, but uh, with having those two guys knowing your cousins on the team, <laughs> how much fun do y'all have? I'm not gonna say trash. I know y'all talk trash to each other. Yeah, we talk trash a little bit, but I mean, we'll get out there play in the yard, basketball, and all that. I mean, we're all all three of us are competitive, so I mean, we all want to win. You're actually the youngest of all three, correct? No, I'm actually the middle. 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 Wheels, the wheels the youngest. Yes, okay. sir. Um, what's that experience been like knowing that you I mean you're actually getting on the team with these guys though? I know because they're growing up. I mean, I mean, you can only imagine. Wait till we get in high school. <laughs> yeah, and then I'm, it's here. <laughs> I mean, we really did. Me and Will had a little bit hot living up to Ashton played his freshman year, and so me and Will had to come in, earning some of our spots, and then playing with them too. I mean, if I do my job and Will does his, I mean, and Ashton, there really ain't no telling what. We They're going to have to deal with one of y'all at each level, too. Line, yeah. linebacker, mm-hmm. safety. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love it. Um, man, I honestly, though, with – I mean, the way y'all are playing now, y'all seem to have got, gotten it back together. Yes, sir. We have. I think if you guys go in there and execute, uh, especially with the transfer you guys got in now, mm-hmm. and I'll let Reggie talk about that, but, I mean, he's definitely tremendously helped you guys. Yes, sir, yeah. On the edge, on offense and defense. Yeah. Um, I know yeah. Reggie's a little sour about that because he was a Gadsden City guy. Yeah, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. Jalen Robinson, he's a he's a great athlete. Um, last year, he was the starting quarterback for Gadsden City. Um, they felt like you know he was better at another position. I think they moved him to a running back or wide receiver. Um, and so, yeah, he's a tremendous athlete. Coach Smith had nothing but great things to say about him. Um, so, I mean, Hoax Bluff got a y'all got a great. Great athlete, great pickup right there. Yes, sir. Definitely gonna help him in, in the playoff run. Right oh here. yeah, definitely. But the main thing about this game coming up against Cherokee County is at the woodshed. It is. <laughs> People who's never, you know, we got a lot of new subscribers from Louisiana that's watching our stuff for a specific <laughs> reason that I call self-inflicted wound. But, uh, for the people of the great state of Louisiana that don't know what the woodshed is, you want to tell them? Yeah. When we play at home, it's the Hope's Bluff Stadium. Long story short, if you play them over there, they, they take you out they behind the woods here. Oh, yeah. Well, Mr. Blevins, glad to have you in, my man. Yes, Thank yes, you so sir. much. Our next game is going to bring us to uh, Collinsville and Sand Rock. Um, Collinsville again coming out. I mean, they played Asbury last week. They're back on their winning way ever since five. I mean, it was just like ascending, and then they played five, and then back ascending. <laughs> um, had you know, kudos to the to our players of the week from uh, Collinsville, mm-hmm. Caleb Jones and Lopez. Great guys had a great outstanding time with them. Coach Willingham came down, loved every second of it. Um, the business as usual. They went right back to work last Friday. Was up, I think. I think they, if not mistaken, they had like forty nine points in the first half, mm-hmm. and then he just let off the throttle and ended up 50, 56 to six over Asbury. Um, Sandrock coming in three and four. Collinsville uh, six and one, four and one in the region. You know, we don't do bulletin board material here, but this is a game where Collinsville should show up and do yeah. what they do. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. I'm going to let you touch on the brick, uh, Reggie. Yeah. Uh, San Rock traditionally has been a tough team. Um, so that's they're definitely a team you can't overlook because um, if not, they'll sneak up on you and they'll, they'll win. Um, 
and uh, Collinsville. I mean, they've, they've got a ton of athletes on the field. Um, I've had the pleasure of watching them play once this season, and I'm hoping to see them some more in the playoffs. Uh, can't say enough about Caleb Jones and uh, Isaac Tillery and all those guys up there. Um, talked to Coach Willingham briefly uh, before the fight game. He's an outstanding guy. So I'm looking forward to them, uh, um, to watching them go through the playoffs. It's going to be it's going to be tough <laughs> in in this two A North. Kevin, um, uh, hosting the playoff game, how huge is that? Though? Oh, it's huge because I mean, you're going off. Uh, uh, it's 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 supposed it's a benefit for for the a reward for the great season you had, mm -hmm. uh, and having home field advantage can you know it'll help you win and it, it, depending on what part of the bracket you're in. Some teams host the whole round of playoffs, first, second, third round until they get to the, to the semifinals. That's right. So I, if, if, if you're me, I'd rather much play and it relaxes the players because they're in their own routine, they're in their own environment, their home field, as opposed to having to drive two hours away and uh, being distracted by, you know, there's less just, there, there's, there's arguments about distractions being at home, but I'm, my opinion is, is there's less distractions probably in, in high school football with being a home game. That's right. Um, so, I mean, I've seen Sandrock play against Fife, and, you know, Fife really – Fife did what Fife does against them. They just <laughs> kind of like an anaconda or a python. They just – it's just a vice. It, it's, mm -hmm. it's hard to watch Fife play a team and watch other teams play a team and get a good judgment of how good a team they are mm -hmm. uh, because, I mean, Fife just – I mean, just suffocates you. And um, yeah. now Collinsville – don't get me wrong. Now Collinsville's defense is – I'm telling you, they're outstanding. Collinsville's not got a weakness on the team. They got a great kicker, mm -hmm. um, a great defense, a great offense. They're good on both sides of the line. They got good linebackers, good special teams guys, good secondary. Collinsville is just a very, very good football team. And I'm just going to go ahead and say this. If Collinsville was in the south, they'd be destroying everybody mm -hmm. in, in, in 2A. Yeah. You know, they're up here in the north, and they're, and they're having to play a team that's been to four of the last five <laughs> state championships and won three of them. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just, you know, and, and, and that was a super competitive game. So, and, and who knows, they, obviously they want another shot at them or whoever. Yeah. So, right now it's about seeding and moving it, on. It's sad uh, that that Clay County and Lyle had to merge because wouldn't you love to see a five oh, and Clay County man. match up? <laughs> I mean, that yeah. would have been – I mean, heck, I mean, Fife and, and, and Clay Central's first team now could probably go at it with a, with a good game. Well, you know, I mean, Clay back then when when Paul took over and Fife and was was starting to ascend, you know, Danny Horn was on the tail end of what he was doing there. And, um, I mean, they crossed paths a few times. And Danny Danny had a little bit better teams back then. Oh, yeah. Nowadays, it, it, I mean, if he was in his prime and they were in his prime, mm. uh, one thing I like about Dan, he, they, he runs that wishbone. You, I mean, yeah, he you does. can't. You know. But uh, and, and a five, I guess they run a ver they run the spread a version or the, the double wing. Double wing. Shot, I man. say, I see. That's I love that kind of offense. You know, that's the thing I like about Collinsville. It's Collinsville. Yeah, they're a spread team, but you know what? When they got to get physical, and go downhill, they do with Malachi or Jones is a physical player. Oh God! Mm -hmm. I mean, he's got receivers. Uh, Skelton, he's got. And then their defense. I mean, you think you know, you'd think a spread team is not physical. No, they're very physical defensively. That's why this game means a lot to Collinsville. But um, we're gonna we're gonna move on from that one. All right. So now we're gonna talk about Westbrook. Westbrook coming off a forty-two to nothing victory over Gaston, playing Wood Woodland. Uh, Woodland struggling a good bit on the year. They're uh, one and six overall, and one and three in the region. Mm -hmm. uh, Westbrook is trying to. At this point, I think they they went out. They're going to be third in that region, correct? Yes, five and two, that, two is, and two. that is correct. Um, they definitely need to do that. Um, so, Reggie, mm -hmm. talk to me about what they need to do against Woodland moving forward. Um, now, last week, you don't know this or not, John Reese Blue. I did. I did hear he played some offense. I think last he had 12 week. carries for 123 yards. Wow. <laughs> I think they did a little switcheroo in a lot of positions and tried some new things. Yeah. And John Reese, I think he, if I'm not mistaken, had a 50 something yard carry on nice. the first play of the game versus I, I did hear about that. I didn't, uh, hadn't looked up the stats yet, but I did hear that uh, our boy John Reese uh, played some offense last week. And, uh, and I, I guess, you know, not saying anything bad about Gaston, but uh, I guess this was a 
good week for Westbrook to try something different because uh, you're getting to the end of the season and about to enter the playoffs. Uh, being a third possible third seed, they're more than likely going to be on the road first round. So, hey, let's switch some things up. And when we get in the playoffs, we get in a sticky situation. We can we can throw some you know different things towards uh, some of these other teams. Um, so I think this week is going to be another week for them to do that, uh, try some different things, uh, preparing for the playoffs. Um, so as long as Westbrook goes out there and do what they've done uh, most of the year, they're going to be fine in this game. I think the hardest challenge for Westbrook or the fans is trying to find somewhere to eat down in Woodville. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's going to be about an hour, about an hour and a half drive, I think. Uh, um, so it's over there, huh? Yeah, it's over there. So, because uh, that was the topic of discussion of where we're going to eat at, we need to eat before to give me something. And let's I thought, just go ahead and eat. Probably let's better eat, eat up here. So. Let's eat at Union Jack, man. I'm just plugging my man, yeah. Simon. Right <laughs> go ahead. Got some go good ahead. fried fish there. Hey, hey you, you got, you got everything. You want. Hey, hey, anything you want there. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but last week was an opportunity to get some players in or, or play some other players to uh, rest some start, not starters, but ones that are injured. Because this is the time of year you want to get guys healed up. Because when you start the playoffs, it's a whole new season. Mm -hmm. uh, even if you're whether you're the four seed or the one seed, and I haven't looked at the bracket that Westbrook, but I would, you know, they they need to be that third seed because it would be probably because if they if they end up the four seed, they're going to have to play the number one seed in another region, which probably I mean, might not bode well. Yeah. Uh, usually for the for you talking about or home and away. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that would that would work for them. Uh, I think they have a chance to finish. Now I think they play San Rock in a non-region game the last week of the regular season. I was looking at their schedule, so that's that's kind of somewhat of a tune-up for for them. Uh, that's uh, a good team to play. Yeah, play. Play. Mm -hmm. you can find out a lot about yeah. your team you play. Yeah. So because uh, I think they've got one thing San Rock will do is yeah. they will show up and they're going to compete. Mm -hmm. They'll yeah. hit you. <laughs> They'll hit you. They'll hit you. <laughs> that's the old slogan on this show. They will hit you. Um, all right. All right, our next game is going to bring us to Asheville versus Cleburne County. Uh, Asheville one and six, zero and five in the region. Uh, Cleburne County one and seven, zero and five in the region. Is it senior night? Well, Mr. Moore, supposed to be. What? Before you get started, do you need to, the disclaimer or anything? Or? Well, I'm just going to say this: the, the views and opinion of myself does not represent that of Asheville Athletics, Average Joe's, uh, or some mamas and papas out there. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go. How about I just get out of your way and just, just the stage is all yours, my friend. Just have at it. Well, I'm slinging darts at a lot of folks. I'm, people may not like me, and that's fine. But don't if you don't want to know the truth, don't ask me. Well, I ask you, so I want to know the truth. Exactly. <laughs> now, um, now, 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 I will say this: Thursday night, we 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 had a lot of young guys play, and the effort was pretty dang good. Um, we had a. a of course, Cherokee, you yeah, give them credit, they had a running back. He was all over the field. Um, we lost 47 to 22, but our, our passing game, we, we did a lot of things with the passing game. We should have scored 28 points, but looking back on the film, our guy stepped out of bounds on the last play of the game. Uh, and that's, you know, we had minus 21 yards rushing. That's the uh, team? Yeah. We, we, we had a few sacks. Um, we, we, we struggle running the ball. Our, our, our strength is. Uh, is is our passing game right now? Uh, we do a lot. We do a lot of things. We we do what do things that way well, like the wide receiver screens and uh, some uh, uh, running back out flat passes. Um, but uh, you know, I've learned over the last several. And these coaches, man, they have worked their rear ends off trying to get these kids ready for success. Mm -hmm. And you know, in, in schools like like Gaston City and, and Asheville and other teams that are struggling right now, it all starts in the locker room. The kids, mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter. You know, the coaches could put the game plan together, but I'm just going to say this: if you don't play with pride, you don't see the kids from Etowah or Fife getting their lullagagging around and coming on the sidelines crying when they when they when they have a bad play. Um, and like I said, you know, I'm just telling it like it is. Um, got some player, you know, and, and there's a, and uh, there's a difference between players that are hurt and players that are injured. You don't see guys from Etowah and Fife and other places, and uh, when, when they got bruises on their arms or bruises, they don't they don't go off the sideline coming or too hurt to play. Senior night, it's the last home game for some of these seniors. I mean, I, 
you know, when you get sand kicked in your face, sooner or later you got to decide, you know, you're going to stand up in front of your girl and push back, or you're going to let them kick more sand on you. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and I, like I said, I'm calling them all out. Friday night's the last home game, and I want to encourage, you know, it's, it's very frustrating because, you know, I, I could have recorded the first week when I said we didn't, you know, when I come out a few weeks ago, I said we played great in the second, first half, and the second half we didn't, we didn't finish. It's been like that all year. And, the, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, it's, I don't know the message just ain't got through. And But they're a great bunch of kids. Well, your message to uh, the whole city of Aniana got through loud and clear. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Well, I thought about driving up there and teaching the Highland Remover because they choked Friday night. <laughs> Did y'all overlook uh, Jacksonville? <laughs> well, <laughs> somewhere Hayden's going. Thank you, everyone, talking about us. Uh, Mr. Wildcats, Wildcats, that is. Oh, touch to my Hayden. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and no. by the way, speaking of H H Hayden Coker, man, that guy's fan of the year. I mean, I, he was. Oh, he, 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 hey, he was the mascot Friday night. They didn't. I don't, I don't oh, know. If man. They, hey, he was all over the place. Man. There's a GIF. I have. We, we made a little one of those little GIF things. Yeah. And uh, he's pretty. He was all over the place. He's he's Mr. Spirit. He he's he's the heart and soul of that area of the, that oh, community up there. He just oh, he, he. I can believe. Oh, it. I can I mean, Hayden's a great kid. Well, I've seen him dressed up as a and, and clown, I, ain't it at the pet rallies? Oh yeah, he's at the pet rallies. He's uh, he's he's everywhere. Oh, he dresses up as a clown I mean, at the pet rally or something like that. Yeah, and uh, by the way, uh, never mind. Well, that's a different different uh, video there. So anyway, yeah, it's over with. Um, <laughs> it's but, uploading. But now. I mean, it could be twenty degrees outside, and that kid would have his shirt off with a big AHS on his. I mean, he. You know, I like where he's I mean, I'm kind of you know, I'm kind of sitting there with my little rant, but I probably need to be more like him because he's a true fan. Yeah. Well, you need the. Uh, the sugar and the salt when it comes to being fans. I mean, you mm -hmm. need the, the the brunt, blood, honest truth, and um, you need the guy who's gonna. And like I said, them. I you're supporting them too, but you're just being. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, yeah. I, like I'm like I like I be getting on my own kids. That's right. And, and uh, That's but right. some of it, and I'm just gonna say that some of it, you know, when the parents are being are, are babying the kids, you need to let the kids coach the kids. I mean, you need to let the coaches coach the kids. That's right. And you know when you come on the sideline, when you when you're sitting there, you know, complaining about, well, the coach is he's been rough on my baby. Well, maybe he needs it. Maybe he needs it. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, you know, it's football. You think people are questioning Paul Benefield right now? Uh, well, you think I, you think there's one parent in Fife, Alabama, that would dare get in his face uh, and talk uh, to him? I doubt it. All right, then. <laughs> Case closed. This kid would probably be off the team. <laughs> Nah, I don't think the parents is gonna do that. And, <laughs> and, 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 and yeah. if a kid come off the, the sidelines with a bruised thigh or a uh, ACL claim and, and that hadn't been checked out yet, you think Paul? Uh, oh, yeah. Hey, rub some dirt on it. And get back out there. There's a little bit of a. We're gonna a bit sweep to the left. Different environment up there. Yeah, it is, to say the least. So, Kevin, uh, I know we don't do scores on here, but just tell me what you want to see from the Asheville Bulldogs Friday night on Senior Night. I want to see them play 48 minutes of football. Have you seen that all year yet? They ain't played 40 minutes all year. Because, like, you know, in some of you know, you got kids that, you know, you got a, you got a safety that's supposed to be covering a wide receiver. And when you're defending the RPO, you see the quarterback come out like, you know, so you go up to the line of scrimmage. And when you do that, you leave you leave the wide receiver covering wide open. And guess what's going to happen? Oh, it's roast. Listen to the coaches. Mm -hmm. I mean, they went to college for this. Mm -hmm. You've got I mean, a great group of coaches down there. I've, and, met, I've and, met Coach Monroe. I've, I've I've heard a lot of great things about Coach Simmons, and not nothing bad, nothing negative about. I him. heard I heard a couple Coach parents. I heard coach. a couple parents get a little negativity Thursday, uh, Friday night, and I thought we was going to, have to go outside the stadium and talk yeah. because uh, <laughs> you know I'm like, hey, this ain't you know, it, it, it this, what's a team? The coach has got a coach, and the players got to play. That's right. And if one side's doing not doing the, doing it, then you got problems. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you know, Rome. I, I've said this several times talking to Coach Smith at Gaston City. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. You got to give coaches time. And the problem these days, schools want to win quick. You know, it and, it, and and you got to have like uh, you got to have players. You gotta, just like the, uh, I heard I heard, heard a press conference today, the like the Alabama press conference. Players are coaching. The other, the, the senior leaders, they're coaching the players on the field to tell them what not to do, and what you know, and how to how to practice. That's their job. Yeah. yeah. And if and if the senior leaders ain't doing that, well, then nobody's going to do it. No. And some of the younger players on the team are are you know are seeing the uh, <clears throat> injuries. 
Mm-hmm. So, well, Kevin, we're gonna shut this one down, brother. Yeah, like I said, I may not be back. I may, there may be a protest. <laughs> <that's over. laughs> so, I think I, that game's gonna be on TV. One of the, one of these. I'm shows. gonna be honest with you. If there's ever a week that I. It, I wish I could be at home with TVs around. Yeah, that would be. There's no way I wouldn't want to be on five sidelines this week, getting to know those guys and that staff, and watching Landon yeah. versus that defense. But man, Edouard Alexander, mm-hmm. Ohachi five. Yeah, and then you know we got these guys in in here in the house today with Hoax Bluff and Southside. I mean these these I want to see all these guys. I want to see that, them all play. I want to see I want to see Senior Night with 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 you guys. I want to see it all. This is the week I wish I had TVs everywhere, <laughs> where I could clone myself. Yeah, the Hoax Bluff, uh, Cleveland or Cherokee County is going to be an interesting ball game because oh, yeah. mm-hmm. the two backs that are featured in that game. Yeah. What about the shed, though, man? They're at the woodshed. At the woodshed. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, man, we're going to shut this one down. Sounds good. Reggie? All right. Good to have you back in the saddle, yes, brother. I'm back. Yep. We're out. <laughs>